Hello everyone, my name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the Technical Enablement and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And this is the High Availability and Disaster Recover Lesson 300 level. Uh, we're going to divide this in two portions, and the first portion we're going to talk about high availability. I'm going to cover some of the concepts on HA, uh, how we can use that inside of OCI, and which components of OCI you can use to achieve your high availability. So here's some of the high availability concepts. So I like to structure this uh, in actually three pillars, um, per se. So I would say high availability concepts are divided in redundancy, um, monitoring, and failover. So redundancy means that multiple servers or multiple applications, uh, they can perform the same task. So you might distribute your infrastructure in a way that um, components can be executed for different type of servers uh, and in case something went wrong you can just switch those tasks to a different server a different application so they can keep the environment uh, up and running the second one is monitoring and the monitoring is responsible to check the environment make sure everything is running the way it's supposed to and if there is a problem the monitor will be able to give you a notification or send a warn message or even trigger some sort of automation uh, to make uh, things to move from one location to another one, move your application from one place to another, right? So monitoring gonna, gonna uh, ended up going really well with the failover uh, portion right, of the high availability. So failover means you, you actually have a primary server up and running your, your tasks, and then if there is something wrong there, uh, the failover will make sure that all the application, all the components associated with that will be moving to a secondary server, uh, which was ready to start uh, receiving the application requests or running or to run the application, and that will become the primary um, server for all the requests from end users or even other applications to access that specific um, workload or task, right? So this is, uh, those are the three main concepts I like to highlight on high availability. So redundancy, monitoring, and failover. So now let's go uh, and talk some of the um, components inside of OCI that can help you to achieve uh, this high availability. So the first one is availability domains. Uh, as you know, um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure provides you regions and then uh, when you access your account, you have access to multiple regions. Depending on the region you select, you're going to see a number of availability domains there. You can see regions with three availability domains, regions with one availability domain. But the idea is the availability domain, they're, they're all isolated from each other. They do not share any physical infrastructure, um, such as power or cooling, uh, all the infrastructure, um, hardware, infra hardware physical infrastructure that will be uh, put in place, they do not share across um, availability domains. So you can put your application and distribute that across ADs. If one AD went down, the second one can take over uh, and keep your application uh, up and running. Of course, there's all the configuration you have to do on the application layer, on the software layer, like I mentioned, to make the failover going from one AD to another. So you, you as a customer is, is responsible to actually deploy that application on HA mode, on high availability mode. Right? But we give you that uh, infrastructure ready for you to start deployment. So if you're looking from on-premise perspective, you don't have to procure another data center or another location to actually uh, deploy your application in an HA fashion on on-premises, right? So when you're moving to the cloud, it, the infrastructure is already provided for you. All you have to do is design your application or move your application in a way that can support the high availability mode and then implement those on the application layer. And then there you have two or three, of, three data centers uh, available for you. So if you go down deep inside of the availability domain, so each availability domain, we're gonna have what we call fault domains. And each one of them will have three fault domains. So that way, if you decided to keep your application in closure, in closure in one single AD, you still can take advantage of HA uh, if you decided to split your application in multiple fault domains. Fault domains follow the same concept as AD. They do not share any physical hardware or any infrastructure, uh, uh, hardware, um, any hardware or physical inf infrastructure. So all the application placed there 
uh, we'll be able to talk to each other, but if some something happens with fault domain one, that's not going to affect fault domain two or fault domain three, right? So the idea is using a single AD, uh, you can also take advantage of the fault domains to deploy or spread your application uh, inside of it. And this is one of the key principles of the high availability is to, to avoid single point of failure. So as we mentioned on the concepts, uh, HA concepts, redundancy is one of the pillars and then avoid single point of failure re resonates um, really well with that. So when you, when you make sure you have redundancy, uh, you're isolating this, uh, you're mitigating this problem. And then on OCI, you can take advantage of multiple regions, you can take advantage of multiple availability domains and multiple domains. So it's a recommendation that when you deploy your application, you think about those uh, concepts, uh, that infrastructure that's available for you. So when we start going deep and diving some of the com components inside of OCI that can help you to create this high availability architecture, uh, we're going to talk about regional and AD specific subnets. So when you deploy your application, when you design the architecture for AJ, you have two options when you, when you design the network configuration uh, part of the, the architecture. So if you, if you want your application to be able to talk to multiple availability domains through the network, uh, you can have one single subnet that cro go cross availability domains. So you have just one subnet to manage um, and all the applications or the servers that you decided to split across availability domains, they will be talking under the same uh, subnet layer. Right? Um, you can also decide to protect your, your subnet by dividing the subnet across uh, availability domains. You can have a subnet A and AD1, subnet B on AD2. Uh, that doesn't mean that they cannot talk to each other, they can, but they're on a different subnets. In some applications for HA, you might require to be on the same subnet because you want to do some failover IP. So that's going to help you a lot with, um, uh, if you're using uh, cross-regional uh, subnets uh, with the failover IP using application with floating IP. So another important key um, portion of OCI to help you achieve the HA is load balancer. Uh, there is a lesson about load balancer that we walk through all the process of uh, you know, uh, deployment, all the co key components of load balancer. A load balancer will give you the ability to send traffic across availability domains. So you can have your application spread those availability domains and then a load balancer can send you traffic through um, those uh, servers that they're, they're just spread across your AD. So load balance is a key uh, important piece uh, when you design your network um, and your high availability uh, architecture. So another portion is the virtual IP. So virtual IP is really important, especially on the compute side when you're attaching the virtual NICs uh, for your virtual machines or your, your bare metal server. And if your application requires one IP uh, that must be floating from one uh, server to another one. Uh, you can do that using the OCI command line interface where you can move one IP, uh, the attach from one VNE can attach to a second one, to another one. Uh, and if you're using regional subnet, that makes things much easier to do it as you don't have to uh, change subnets to do it. You can just move one, one uh, virtual IP to another one. Right, so in compute um, portion of OCI, it's highly recommended that you have what we call standby mode. If you want to use standby mode, that's one of the uh, options for redundancy uh, on HA, where you have one application up and running. Um, this is active, all the requests are going through that application. Um, everyone is reaching that server, and then you have a standby server just waiting to take over in case something went wrong with the active one. So that's what we call a standby mode. Uh, another option is using active active mode. So you have applications that can perform the same task and they're both active. So when the, when the application or the user requests some access on that application, they can land on one server or another, right? It, and the application will uh, keep sending the, the traffic just fine. 
So another important piece is the alt scaling portion for compute. So if you want to avoid single point of failure, you might want to use alt scaling to take advantage of it and make some uh, of the um, uh, failover uh, and the high availability a little bit more automated. So when you're using alt scaling, you can use metrics to monitor some of the CPU or memory utilization, and based on those performance metrics, uh, we can take a, we can take some actions, which is uh, increase the amount of servers that can perform the same task um, inside of a pool and decrease the amount of servers in case the, the, the performance uh, and the utilization goes uh, um, beyond goes uh, down to a certain point right so it's up to you to, to define what's the point of scale um, in and out uh, when designing the outscaling uh, services. But keep in mind that outscaling can help you a lot uh, when designing your application for HA. So another important piece is the HA for uh, connectivity. Uh, so as you know, you might, when you implemented OCI, you want to have connectivity to the OCI on in, using public IPs or using IPsec, VPN, or Fast Connect, right? So IPsec and Fast Connect, uh, they connect, both use DRG to make the connection from your on-premises to OCI. Uh, and you have to think about redundancy of those components, how that works uh, in case uh, your IPsec VPN goes down or your, your, your equip equipment connecting to the VPN goes down or fail. So what happens on that situation? Same for the Fast Connect um, virtual circuits. So just to give an overview, uh, and there is a lesson, a 200 lesson that goes on detail on IPsec and uh, Fast Connect. But the, here, just for um, HA uh, concept, so inside of the GRG, we have what we call transit pop. And then transit pop will, will give you the tunnels uh, that you're going to connect to your CPE. So as you can see, when you, when you spin up the IPsec connectivity, uh, you're going to have two tunnels that you need to configure. And then one tunnel will connect to a, to a transit pop, and the second tunnel will connect to a uh, secondary transit pop. So inside of the DRG, there is a building HA um, configuration that will uh, make sure that your tunnel will be um, up and running uh, when connecting to the CPE. We always recommend the customers to use multiple CPEs as well if they want to achieve high availability uh, on their location too, so that they can switch from one CPE to another one. For Fast Connect, I always recommend you use a multiple virtual circuits. So in this case, two virtual circuits will be uh, in place, uh, from connecting from your on-premises to OCI, um, going through the network, to the provider network or to the edge services uh, of the Fast Connect. So that way, if one virtual circuit goes down, you have the second one uh, that can keep uh, the connection from your location to OCI. I always use uh, multiple virtual circuits. Uh, for the storage portion, for the storage portion, when you're using object storage, object storage was designed to actually replicate the data or to be the most high durable uh, services inside of, uh, inside of OCI. So there's, there's replication that's happening um, uh, behind the scenes for object storage. When you create an object, that object will be replicated across uh, servers behind the scenes. So that the, the you're always going to see the latest copy of the data you put in inside of the object storage, and they do uh, auto healing. They can they can auto heal uh, itself the, uh, if there's something wrong with the servers uh, behind the scene. We can replace the server. The data will, will be uh, replicated as well. So all the data integrity behind the scenes is actually working in a way that can serve you the latest um, the latest file inside of the object storage. So object storage has this redundancy layer that's already in place uh, by OCI. For block volume, uh, for block volume, you always, always recommend you to take some uh, actions as a customer uh, for block volume. You can create your policy-based backups, so you can automatically perform backups of your uh, block storage and you can restore things from availability domain 1 to availability domain 2 and, and 3 and so on. Uh, so when, you, when you're creating backups, you can also uh, send um, copies of block storage from one region to another one. So if you think about creating your HA 
um, scenario, uh, you also have to think about how you're going to replicate the storage, right? So how you're going to make the storage available from one AD to another one. So Polispace backups can perform that out on a Mac. You can clone volumes too from one AD to another one. So if you're looking for some shared um, storage, you can use the file storage. File storage can give you that share um, um, availability um, in order to connect servers that spread across multiple availability domains and be able to uh, get files from this single uh, shared device. So if your application is looking to do a failover from AD2 to AD3, for example, uh, you still can point um, to the files that are static, that are persistent uh, in, inside of the file storage service. Okay, yeah, so this concludes our HA portion inside of OCI. So you went over some of the concepts and some of the uh, components of OCI that can help you to create your HA architecture. Yeah, thanks for watching.